Oh, hey, Jeffrey, good to see you again. Hey, Brandon, how are you, man? I'm good, man. I appreciate you taking the time to talk about Marvel's What If with me. I hope you're having a good day with it. I'm good. What have you been up to these last few hours? Man, it's been an adventure. I ran out. They actually released an Infinity Gauntlet Lego set that I ran to the store to try to get, and it was sold out. So oh, that was wow. my day. <laughs> wow. nah. how, how many questions about the Watcher have you been answering for the past few hours? I, I think three. Three? Oh, okay. That's, that's not too many. There you go. Not too many, yeah. So we're all good. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm going to throw a few more at you if that's okay. Cool. Uh, I, I mean, I, I want to start at, at the beginning of, of your introduction to Marvel, really. Like, were you as much of a watcher of the Marvel Cinematic Universe as your watcher character was? Like, did you have favorite movies? And did you have a good depth of knowledge? Or was this a very educational uh, thing to join? Uh, well, I had some knowledge. I'm not a, an encyclopedia. Uh, my son is the encyclopedia. Um, I took him. He's 19 now. So I took him to his first Marvel movie. I guess he was nine or 10. Um, so he I viewed um, many of these films through his eyes. Uh, and he, like all Marvel heads, you know, deeply invested in this stuff. And so when they asked me to be a part of it, First, I, you know, I asked him if he knew anything about the Watcher. And of course he did. Uh, he, he was, oh, wow. Oh, man. And he described, you know, this kind of, you know, quasi godlike character who kind of exists outside of things. And anyway, I was excited um, to take it on one because, I, you know, he's such a fan. But also I found the character interesting and the possibilities interesting with this character that yeah. he is kind of uniquely powerful and that he can traverse all of these different um, parts of the multiverse. That was interesting to me. And then two, to kind of come back and work, um, you know, from uh, on the animated piece through my voice is something that I enjoy doing. I enjoy doing voice work and trying to figure out if I can play, uh, you know, certain notes and bring certain qualities through the voice that uh, that lend itself to whatever's on the screen. That's fun. That's fun for me. Just in that, just in the first couple minutes of the first episode, it's just like, well, can't imagine anybody else's voice here. Oh, cool. <laughs> so you nailed it. You nailed it. I'm curious, like this is a character who obviously, I don't know how deep of a dive you've done, but there are stories where like he's interfered. He's, 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 he's met the fantastic four and so many other characters And early on in the show. We have no signs of that yet. I don't want to spoil anything, but is that the kind of stuff, you know, have you had like that fantasy conversation with your son or in your own head about where this could go and things you want to do? Yeah, he, um, we'll see where he goes. We'll see how dispassionate he is about all of this. Um, but yeah, the, the, I mean, the first time we see him uh, on the moon in Fantastic Four, he finds himself in the middle of this Cold War, you know, East versus West, you know, proxy battle. And he kicks some ass. You know, he's awesome, man. I mean, he's got, you know, he's, he's not to be toyed with the watcher. You know, don't get it twisted. You know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm observing until I'm not, at least, in you know, in, in, in that uh instance so yeah there's some fun stuff to be had with him we'll see where it goes hell yeah i love your passion for it dude i hope you get to have all that fun with it that's cool i appreciate that you appreciate it that's cool yeah uh in the, the, the cast is incredible and you're bringing in a lot of people with uh who are marvel veterans like you have chris hemsworth as thor mark ruffalo as the whole karen gillen as nebula the list goes on uh, but they have the advantage of their their portraying characters that they've already been playing for years Whereas you're coming in, you're doing a brand new version of a character. Uh, did you did you did you feel like you had to do a bit of a, a learning curve to join the MCU and learn how to uh, lend your voice to a complex character? Oh well, yeah, I certainly haven't kind of marinated in this character the way they have, and I can appreciate what that means um, from well, I guess from Westworld having worked now, geez, almost seven years on that show. You really understand the details, the nuance and the specificity and the depth of the character in a way that you, you, you know, you don't unless you spend that time with it. So, yeah, that, that I didn't didn't have that luxury here. Um, so I just had to make it up as I as I went along, you know, and 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 sit in it um, uh, and, you know, in, in my closet uh, during the pandemic and play the music. Um, 
But uh, I think we found we found something that 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 works well and interacts uh, well with um, the other uh, voice work that um, that the you know, the the Marvel vets brought to the table. Yeah. How has it worked in the in like recording? Have you gotten to meet any of the co-stars? Have you all done this completely independently? Like, is there anybody that is particularly fun to collaborate with? However, like it is broken down on a technical aspect. Yeah, it's it's actually much more uh, disconnected than you would think. We all kind of do our own work in our own ways. No, uh, you know, uh, Chris, uh, you know, Hemsworth and and, you know, and Mark uh, were not gathered in my bedroom uh, closet uh, putting all this down, you know. That'd be maybe. a hell of a sight, though. That'd be great. That's going to make for a great behind the scenes. Maybe, 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 maybe one day we'll, we'll get one get one of those going on. But no, not in not in. <laughs> <laughs> Not in this case. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a much, um, yeah, it's, um, and particularly during the pandemic, of course, yeah. everybody's, everybody's in their own space, uh, somewhere in the multiverse. And, uh, we all, we, 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 you know, we put it down and it, and it, and it goes through some kind of magic, uh, uh elixir, or I don't know, magic process that, you know, that, that transforms it into what we see, um, in these episodes. I don't know how they do it, but it comes out so seamless. It, it, like you could have fooled me. I would have thought y'all were all in the same room. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, based on the pes- press conference, it, it looks like uh, the watcher is going to have kind of a re- an ongoing uh, relationship with Peggy Carter throughout. Like if there is a through line, that's a part of this. Uh, but also, I mean, it seems like Dr. Strange would be a good fit for such a relationship and things like that. Is there a soft spot for any characters that you can share? Um. Well, you, I don't know if, if, if it's necessarily a soft spot, but the watcher is kind of observing things with an eye on just it, justice or justness balance. I would say he's, he's observing, um, um, the, uh, the, you know, the behaviors of these characters, but he's also has one eye on balance on balance throughout the multiverse. Okay. And so I'm not sure if it's a soft spot, but there are certainly events that he feels may, um, may maybe throwing off uh, the balance of things. Okay. okay. And, you know, he becomes compelled um, and sits up in his chair even more so at those things. All right. That's going to be interesting. That's going to be interesting. Now, listen, before I let you go, I do, as a comic book fan, I got to ask you about the Batman, man. Is that okay? Yeah, sure. I, like, I just want to hear, you know, first, I'd love to hear what it's like to stand opposite Pattinson's Batman, what, 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 the, what his presence is like. But also, I mean, you're Commissioner Gordon, dude, that's an iconic role that I can't wait to see you in. How, how do you think yours is going to compare to, a, this has been done before, and I feel like you're putting your stamp on it just from the little bit that I've seen. I'd love to hear how, you, how you're making this your own. Well, um, we, we all, we all made this film together. Um, Rob and, and, and Zoe and, um, you know, Colin and John Turturro, all of us, uh, working within under Matt Reeves direction to create, uh, these characters and a Gotham that was specific to, um, to our film. And so whatever we do individually, is kind of um, a reflection of what we, what the, you know, what we're all doing and what Matt's vision is. And it's a very specific one. It's a bit of uh, more of a throwback to the DC as in detective comics uh, of it all. So it's, um, it's, you know, I loved it. I loved, I loved uh, the script and I loved what we were doing. We were doing it in circumstances that I didn't love that were really very challenging once we shut down and when, then we got back to work in September and it was, it was tricky, um, particularly the isolation away from family over in London and kind of isolated in a, in an empty hotel. And, but we made, I think a brilliant film and uh, I loved, uh, you know, I loved um, the dynamic that Rob and I were able to create. And I mean, he, I'm, I'm really excited for people to see um, what he does with this. Uh, he creates three, there are three kind of distinct um, people. There's, there's 
Rob, uh, there's Bruce Wayne, and there's um, the Batman. And they're, they're each distinct. It's really cool. And uh, yeah, um, <clears throat> coming, 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 uh, coming at you uh, um, next spring. 2022, man. I can't wait. Well, listen, we got a lot to look forward to just with What If on August 11th. Thank you so much for the time. Can't wait to see a lot of your upcoming work, man. I'm a big fan. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it, man.